commercial motorbike riders in Douala and Yaoundé rode to the offices of their different governors to say they are against any form of disorder that will jeopardize the peace of the country. Political party leaders and the academia in Cameroon are lambasting the call for insurrection, saying it will only be detrimental in the world of tragic inevitability. And the construction of two 225 kilowatt single circuit transmission lines from Abombang in the east to the littoral now stands at 20% and must be delivered in 2020. I am Ben and Bumagana. Good evening and welcome to the 7.30 News. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. As we said in the headlines, commercial motorbike riders and hawkers in Yaoundé have pledged to bar the way to disorder in the capital. They took the commitment today during a meeting with the governor of the central region. Ibneza Kanga attended the meeting and brought back this report. The first delegation to be received by the governor of the central region was that of leaders of commercial motorbike riders of Fundi Division, while the second was a delegation of leaders of hawkers in Yaoundé. Through their spokespersons, the bike riders and hawkers dissociated themselves from any insurrection. Each delegation handed a document to the governor in which they took a firm commitment not to be part of any disorder. Addressing the two delegations, the governor of the central region, Nasri Paul Bear, thanked them for their sense of patriotism. I invited to on the 22nd to be the watchdog for all of us. The commercial motorbike riders and hawkers left the governor's office determined that this order will not pass through their sectors. This time, members of the National Trade Union of Commercial Motorbike Riders of Cameroon, Sinako Motak, say they will not be part of the planned nationwide public manifestations called by members of some opposition parties in the country. They were at the Littoral Governor's Office today to underline their stance on the promised protest from the MRC party, which to them will tamper with the stability of the country. Alfonso Bongwa reports from Douala. Their visits are becoming more frequent in the Bonanjo administrative neighborhood since they sent calls for a nationwide protest from some political parties. Some amongst these bikers have tasted the bitterness of a region whose peace and stability now dangles in the air. Today, some of them students turned commercial bike riders cannot afford to have a repeat of what they have gone through in Bamenda before making their escape to Douala. People have been crying since four years ago. Me, I'm from Bamin. I, I have, I'm, I, I have advanced level, and I was following my, I was following my uh, HND, but there was no way due to all this when we, we came to hide here. Now they want to light fire in Douala. We said no to that. Through the National Trade Union of Commercial Bike Riders of Cameroon, Sinakomotak, they have come to tell the governor of the littoral region that they will not be part of the nationwide protest. We are everywhere running for peace. So when we heard that uh, there is one political party who wants to destabilize uh, Cameroon, we were very, very annoyed and they want to use us as the image to bring political instability in Cameroon. But for all, we said no to that. Littoral Governor Samuel Diodoneva Hadibua told the bikers that by this simple act, they have shown their attachment to Republican institutions. It is the second wave of bike riders visiting the governor with similar motives in two days.
The association More Women in Politics has added its voice in condemning the call for insurrection. The association desensitizing women and children not to take part in any disorder. Here is the vice president of More Women in Politics, Mpe Agbo Agnes Ika. And except Kurt Faros by Ebenezer Akanga. Every mother you have has responsibility to educate your children, to take care of your children, to see that your children do what is right. And it will be no, of no use letting your children to go out rioting, causing disorder, that at the end of the day, you as a parent, you as a mother, you want to bear the pains. We are presently trying to educate our children and telling them the importance of peace, why they should stay home, not to go to the streets to riot. Traditional rulers have joined their voices to a host of others expressing their disapproval at calls for insurrection. While some say sensitization is necessary to ensure that youths do not involve themselves in any activities that undermine peace, others explain that vigilance is essential. Clarice Aritakan. Traditional rulers of the Mfundi division are unanimous in their reaction to calls for insurrection. We ask our population to continue going to work and that disorder will not come through on Fundi. To preserve peace, we make use of vigilante groups. We are watching to ensure peace for the population and the nation too. We are for peace. We say no to disorder. Other custodians of tradition insist that the rule of law must prevail. We are calling on the youth not to react to calls on insurrection. We are sensitizing our people and calling on the traditional rulers to sensitize and talk to their children because Cameroon is a blessed country. In other communities, the same views have been echoed. To us talking about insurrection is not on the agenda. We are against it. While more and more voices are united in their condemnation of any activities aimed at jeopardizing peace, traditional rulers have joined the queue to express their disapproval at threats to stability. A group of leaders of 20 opposition political parties, known as G20, has condemned the call for insurrection by a political party leader. They were speaking today in Yaoundé during a press conference in which they also called on Cameroonians not to take part in any insurrection that destabilizes institutions of the Republic. Our reporter Sidoni Job Mamdi attended a press conference on our reports. Supporting the spirit of oneness by promoting peace and stability in Cameroon is one of the key message developed during the press conference organized by a group of leaders of 20 opposition political parties known as G20. Cameroon is our beloved country. So we have to fight those people who try to destroy it by making the revolution. We have a democratically elected president Cameroon is a state of law. Whosoever, whatever group of persons are interested to bring Cameroon into a mess will have to face the law. The members that constitute 20 opposition political parties are all unanimous. The revolution is the act of attempt to change law by force. This is a revolution. It's not insurrection. He is where he is, not out of his own willingness, but by the will of the people, by the will of God, through the people. The press conference was also an occasion for members of the G20 to call on administrative authorities to be vigilant so as to prevent the planned march which can destroy the social peace of Cameroon. The CPDM party has condemned in very strong terms the insurrection announced by the national president of the MRC party, Maurice Camto. In a declaration made by the National Secretary for Communication for the Central Committee, CPDM, Professor Jacques Femme Dongo calls on supporters of the party not to heed to any of the call. Here is Professor Jacques Femme Dongo in this excerpt. Our dear admiral of our country, Cameroon, likes 
peace, likes unity, and like the progress of Cameroonians. CPDM uh, does not like uh, disorder. We like peace for our country, and the motto of our country Cameroon is peace, work, and fatherland. We want the progress of our fatherland in peace and in work. The Academia in Cameroon has warned of the consequences of an insurrection in the country. During a meeting in Yaoundé, they called on authorities to take appropriate measures to deal with any attempt to disrupt peace and tranquility. Ibn Ezra Kanga again talked with the political scientist and prepared this report. It has been announced as a peaceful march. But the academy see its political objective, which is to remove the president who has been duly elected from office, make it look like an insurrection or a revolution. The main goal is not only to protest against the electoral regulations, the electoral rules. It is not only to claim a peaceful resolution of the conflict in the northwest and southwest regions. It is clearly to obtain the departure of President Paul Pierre. And it is not possible to have this political goal without an open conflict because President Paul Pierre has been elected. By all intents and purposes, the planned march is to destabilize Republican institutions and throw the country into chaos. There are regulations uh, in order to maintain security and stability when uh, there is uh, this type of threat of uh, insurrection. Cameroonians in their vast majority have been condemning disorder in any form and calls are being made from the four corners of the country for the citizens not to take part in the demonstration. Cameroon has several communities. If we have an open conflict in this country, it will be a chaos. Cameroonians are mature enough to be deceived by merchants of illusion. On to something different. Now, observation from the Mampang substation in Dume, East region of Cameroon, show that the construction of two 225 kilowatt single circuit transmission lines stands at 20%. The single circuit transmission lines will connect in Kongsamba, Bafusama, Bombang, and Yaoundé. During a field visit to Dume Friday, the Minister of Water Resources and Energy, uh, Gaston Ilundu, Esomba stressed that the project must be delivered in 2022 as expected. Constantine Bomb reports. This project is expected to extend electricity transmission and transportation network for four regions. It is also expected to provide electricity to 423 new localities targeting some 335,000 new consumers in rural areas. In uh, 15 months, Eastern region will be connected to the interconnected network coming from Sanaga. We'll be able to supply all the need of this region. Eastern region will have a, a better electricity. Global percentage for prefabrication is around 80, uh, 95 percent. But for, for site, uh, it's uh, around 40 percent. We aim to finish everything on December uh, 2021. The visit enabled the minister to once more reassure populations affected by the energy project that they will be duly compensated. The project is funded by the World Bank with the aim to improve rural electrification in Cameroon. Two eminent Cameroonian professors who form part of the team that toiled to give Cameroon the polio-free status have been recognized with medals of valor. Professor Rose Ghana Foreman Likim, chairperson of the African Commission on Polio Eradication, and Professor Titania Ekwe, president of the National Committee for the Eradication of Polio, were both made members of the National Order of Valor. We hear in this report by Beatrice Ngom.
Cameroon is polio free according to the African Regional Commission for the certification on eradication, no doubt. But it took the team that worked to give Cameroon the status 30 years and their steadfastness has paid off. The state has recognized the scientist who defended Cameroon's case. The President of the Republic has recognized all that effort and then has given me this decoration. I feel so humbled and I give God all the glory and I'm very, very grateful for this. Yet, to be wild polio-free does not mean the country is completely safe. We are still having virus, wide virus polio in Afghanistan and in Pakistan. For, for any reason, this, this polio, wide value polio can come in our country. So it's very important for the mothers to take their kids to get immunized. Six out of Cameroon's ten regions continue to be polio risk zones. These six regions are the regions where we are discovered that the immunity of the children is not so strong. So we have to strengthen the immunity of these children in this uh, special regions. The vaccination campaign against polio launched Friday will therefore target children in the risk zones. Let's stay in the Ministry of Public Health to say that it was a festive atmosphere today over there at the ministry as calls of top-ranking officials received medals in recognition for their services to the country. In the same ceremony, the board chair and director general of the National Center for the Procurement and Supply of Essential Medicines and the pioneer director general of the National Center for Blood Transfusion were also installed. Beatrice Losamba reports. It is a new era at the National Center for the Procurement and Supply of Essential Medicines as Belle Marie Melanie takes the steering as board chair to oversee the activities of Sinami. More fresh blood has also been pumped in as a 40-year-old pharmacist, Dr. Van de Deli, is installed as Director General of the Center, and Cameroon's blood bank should never run short of supplies, recommendations made by the Minister of Public Health. Manaoda Malashi commissioned the new Director General of the National Blood Transfusion Center, Dr. Doran Banya. Social marketing to capture blood donors, and that's the greatest mission. It all begins with blood donation, and so if we get blood donors, the rest will follow. Cameroon owes this reputation to a handful of people recognized by the state this day. Just like them, Professor Rose Leke and co, who contributed to the eradication of wild polio in the country, are decorated, together with a whole gamut of renowned health specialists whose remarkable work earned them recognition. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice. Let's pause a while to talk about uh, our fight against COVID-19. The government of Cameroon and health experts have warned of a possible second vague of the COVID-19 spread in the country if barrier measures are disregarded. So far, the recovery rate in Cameroon stands at 93.8% with over 831 active cases in the country. Let's now join Baldwin Sama at the Public Health Operations Center with his guest, Dr. Flo Balana, for updates. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Benin, and welcome. As you say, it remains quite delicate uh, given that uh, very few communities believe that there is a possibility that we may have as, uh, the outbreak of a second wave as far as the spread of COVID-19 is concerned, given that very few persons still continue respecting the different barrier measures to limit the spread of the virus. And public health experts say that uh, upcoming situations such as the official reopening of the airports, the back-to-school for the 2020-2021 school year, and the official resumption of sporting 
activities may pave the way for the outbreak of a second wave for, for the spread of for the virus in Cameroon. And that's what we shall be discussing with Dr. Flo Balana, who is the deputy head of the investigation unit here at the Public Health Emergency Center. Good evening, doctor. Good evening. Tell us, what are the indicators of a possible outbreak of, for the second wave of COVID-19 in Cameroon? The increase of the reproduction rate, the increase of the positivity rate of the samples tested, and the increase of the occupancy rate of the management centers. And uh, given that uh, some health professionals in the country have gained a lot of experience uh, taking care of COVID-19 patients in the country, with this possible outbreak of uh, the second wave of COVID-19, given the health units in the country, can they manage the situation? The current team, with all the experience that it has gained, and the capacity building sessions at all levels, can, is more than ready to respond to the even of a second wave of COVID-19 spread. Thank you so much, Dr. Flo Balana. You are the Deputy Head of for the Investigation Unit here at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center. Ben and Bumagana, public health experts have used this opportunity to remind parents and guardians to continue ensuring that their children respect all these barrier measures, especially on the eve of a back to school for the 2020-2021 school year. They should wear their face mask, especially children between 7 and 11. They are man it is mandatory for them to wear face masks, but those below 5, it is not mandatory for them to wear face masks because if they stop respecting these barrier measures with the up up upcoming school year, the official opening of the airport and the official resumption of sporting activities, we may find ourselves in a situation where there is this outbreak of the second wave of the spread of COVID-19. Back to you, Benin Bumagana. Thank you very much, Baldwin Sama van Kamen. The National Civil Engineering Equipment Pool, better known by its French acronym Mat Genie, will henceforth take charge of the construction of culverts in the different councils across Cameroon. This was the outcome of a ceremony to launch the new project at the company's headquarters at the Col Bicoc in Yaoundé. Details from CRTV Centre. The management of the National Civil Engineering Equipment Pool, Matt Jenny, is coming up with what has been termed a sustainable and efficient public works model. Expected to benefit councils in Cameroon, this new system will fast track road rehabilitation projects as well as secondary facilities. They are economically more efficient, they are technically more efficient. And as far as uh, putting them in place is concerned, they are more rapid to be put in place. We don't interrupt the traffic for long. For less than one day, the traffic is interrupted. And then people, when it is installed, people start working again. Representing councils in the centre region, Augustin Tamba pointed out that this innovative technique also has a socio-economic dimension, that of enhancing the decentralisation process in the country. One of the major problems is to see how to solve problem of bridge and so on. And uh, you have seen in a few minutes when the director given some technical explanation that we can use those uh, special uh, equipment uh, in our rural road. Why? It has a cheapest cost. Secondly, you can implement it very quickly. Worth mentioning is the fact that this public works model falls in line with the commercial contract signed in January 2019 by the Minister of Public Works to re-equip the enterprise with quality tools that can better enhance infrastructural amenities and particularly road networks. <laughs> Over in the southwest region, a consignment of hospital equipment, bedding and other household materials have been donated to health centers and communities in Boya and its environs. The donation was made by Honorable Emilia Monjoa Lifaka in Boya following the launch of the Monjoa Lifaka Foundation. Henry McCauley reports. The one major event that brought a huge crowd 
to the Survey School Field in Boya was the launch of the Mundrali Faka Foundation, a foundation that the founder and director, Honorable Emilia Mundrali Faka, says wants to contribute its own bit to alleviate the plight of the people of Boya and by extension, Fako and even Cameroon. Our aim is to bring in as many people on board as possible and to get many children to benefit from it. The five health centers, that is Bova, Ewongo, Bonakanda, Bokova, and Bojongo, have already received consignments of health equipment, while communities like the Bojongo Court area, Bonavada, Lisoka, Mamu, amongst others, have equally received household instruments, beddings, and toiletries. Honorable Emilia Munjuali Faka has promised to do more for our community, urging people of goodwill to join her so that they can improve the living conditions of the people of Fako in general and Boya in particular. Looking forward to hang out with friends and family this weekend? Our cultural segment is your answer. Petit Pei will be entertaining fans at the Sanza nightclub tonight in a live performance with his orchestra. Fans of Aeju Mamadou will be served a new rhythm at his album launch in the Ahala neighborhood and in cinema. Greenland will be pre premiered at the United Cinema Hall in Bankomo. Joy Stata takes us through our cultural rendezvous. The red carpet for the weekend Petit Pei live on stage tonight in Yaoundé at some 8 p.m. A rendezvous highly awaited by fans. Once Mr. Classic blows another candle today while launching his new album Bottle Soul over in Douala. You can also dance to Black Rim's third single recently released titled Dem Go Die with one of the CRTV's reporters displaying his inborn talent too. Similarly, Bikutsi icon Aijo Mamadu presents a new album this weekend at the Ahala neighborhood in Yaoundé. Wrap up the moment with cinema, the United Movie Hall in Bankomo will project the film Greenland for the first time. It must have been a hectic week, a moment of relaxation would be worth it. A recently appointed officials at the National Institute of Youth and Sports have been called upon to serve by example. They were installed into their functions this Friday by the director of the National Institute of Youth and Sports, Dr. Ebal Menye. Details with you, Baldwin Sama. They have been given new responsibilities as staff of the National Institute of Youth and Sports, appointed to different posts of responsibility. These men and women will have to put their experience at the service of the training of physical education instructors. Installing them into their functions, Dr. Ebal Menye, director of the National School for Youth and Sports, called on them to be examples and work according to the school's orientation. I think that Cameroonians will need to join hands together to see how the, the notion of bilingualism should not be a myth but a reality. It is true that efforts are being done at the level of the government, at the level of the individual, but we think that uh, uh, it should be a collective, it should be a collective effort so that Cameroon should not only be a bilingual country, but it should be an excellent bilingual country. The commitment was taken for sacrifice, love for duty, hard work to be their watchwords as they kickstart their new responsibilities. Thank you very much for watching the 7.30 News. Atta Badin Omar will be here with the 8.30 News. And I'll be back tomorrow for what is making news in Cameroon and out of the country. See you tomorrow. Good night.